Hi everyone, my name is Alexander Yaldu, and today I'm going to be talking about decreased long-term survival with antithymocyte induction in elderly kidney transplant recipients. I have no financial disclosures and I won't be discussing any off-label or investigational use. So when we look at the distribution of adults waiting for a kidney transplant by age, we see that the group age 65 to 74 is increasing um, over a 10-year period um, from about 2006 to 2016. And this is the group that we're going to be focusing on today. Our study design and patient selection included a single center retrospective comparative study to evaluate the outcomes of elderly versus younger kidney transplant recipients. We looked at 318 first time kidney transplant recipients. Our first group uh, were the young group and those were patients aged less than or equal to 59 years of age. Our second group were the elderly aged greater than or equal to 65 years. We excluded patients aged 60 to 64 in order to prevent any sort of overlap between the two groups. Our immunosuppression protocol consists of induction and maintenance immunotherapy. For the induction, it was stratified by immune risk. So patients either received antithymocyte globulin, which I'm going to be referring to as ATG for the purposes of brevity. Um, and those patients received uh, ATG at four and a half milligrams per kilogram. The other induction was basiliximab, and those patients received a total of 40 milligrams, um, or patients received no induction. The patients were maintained on a regimen of MMF, um, tacrolimus, and then steroids, uh, which were tapered to five milligrams uh, by the first year. For our demographics, the median follow-up uh, period for the younger group was about 71 months, and for the elderly group, it was about 68 months, and there was no difference between the follow-up period among those groups. For the young group, the mean age was about 50 years, whereas the mean age for the elderly was 70 years, and we did see a statistical significance um, in the difference between the ages for those two groups. There was no difference in the demographics with regard to gender or race. Um, about half of the young patients were African American, while about half of the elderly patients were Caucasian. For our baseline characteristics, we looked at the type of donors, and we found that there was uh, no difference between living and deceased donors for both groups. Uh, with regard to delayed or immediate graft function, there was also no difference. For induction, um, about half of the young patients received ATG, whereas about 47% of the elderly received ATG, and there was no difference in the induction therapies used um, for both groups. For our outcomes, we first looked at graft function, um, and we looked at GFR as a measure of graft function. We used the MDRD equation, which takes into account age, uh, race, and um, we looked at that over the five-year period. Uh, we found that there was no difference in the graph function between the groups. For the outcomes of biopsy-proven rejections, we found that the younger group had, uh, about, uh, had a lot more biopsy-proven rejections. They had about 40%, whereas the elderly group experienced it at about 15%, um, and the difference was significant. We also saw that the younger patients not only had more rejections, but they had more severe rejections. Um, the younger patients had about 9% uh, severe rejections, um, almost double that of the elderly group, which was about 5%. We plotted those rejections um, over the follow-up period using a Kaplan-Meier plot. Um, so as you can see, um, within the first year, the younger patients, which is the solid black line, um, experienced most of their rejections, um, and that continued over the full long-term follow-up period. Um, so again, we're seeing that the younger patients are experiencing a lot more rejections. With regard to the outcomes in graft survival, we saw that there was actually no difference between the groups. Um, about 87% of the young um, had graft survival at follow-up, um, and about 91% of the elderly um, had graft survival, and there was no difference between the groups. 
Um, for the outcomes for patient survival, we saw that the um, younger group had much better survival than the elderly group, um, with about 88% of the young surviving at the follow-up and about 69% of the elderly. Um, we broke down the deaths by cause of death, um, and we saw that um, more than half of the young deaths were due to cardiovascular events, um, and more than half, about 65% of the elderly deaths were due to infections and cancers. Um, we did not see any statistical significance uh, between the causes of death, um, and that was mainly due to the small sample size. Um, as you can see with the cancers and the other deaths, um, there were very small numbers. So again, we plotted this um, along the follow-up period. And as you can see, the separation um, for survival happens almost immediately post-transplant, uh, where the elderly patients have uh, much lower survival than the younger patients. Um, and that was statistically significant throughout the follow-up period. Um, we couldn't really plot the death events on a Kaplan-Meier because of the sample size, but we still wanted to be able to visualize that along the follow-up period. Um, so what we did is we did a dot plot just to see when these deaths are occurring. Um, and if you look at um, the cardiovascular events, those are happening along the entire follow-up period. Um, and you see during the long-term follow-up, um, after about five years, um, most of those deaths are with the younger patients. Um, whereas with the infections and cancers, we're seeing those earlier than the cardiovascular events, um, up to about six years post-transplant. Um, and as you can see, most of those are the elderly patients. So what we did is we broke down the young and the elderly patients by the induction treatments. Um, the solid red line shows the younger pa or the elderly patients, excuse me, who were treated with ATG, and the solid black line is the young patients who were seen with AT or treated with ATG at induction. Um, so we saw that the difference between those two curves was. Um, significant throughout the follow-up period, um, and those patients who were elderly and treated with the ATG had the worst survival out of all of the groups. Um, we also looked at the uh, young and elderly treated with basiliximab, and there was no difference between those curves, which are the um, dotted curves. So in conclusion, we found that the elderly patients experience decreased biopsy-proven rejections, decreased severity of those biopsy-proven rejections. They had comparable long-term graft function and graft survival with the young. And they also, however, they also had decreased long-term patient survival um, in comparison to the younger group. Um, so the main uh, takeaway from this is that we found that the ATG induction um, had a relationship to the decreased long-term elderly survival. Um, so we concluded that more consideration needs to be paid to elderly patients who are treated with ATG. Um, we thought that a future studies, um, we're actually working on um, a validation cohort using the national data to look to see if we see these same trends on a national level. Thank you.